Hello, I'm Richard Pickering, Deputy Executive Director and Chief Historian at Plymouth Patuxent Museums. And today is November 11th the 400th anniversary of the signing of the Mayflower Compact, one of the founding documents of our nation. Edith Hamilton, the great historian of classical Athens, said the fifth century city was white hot with creative energy, and that's what Plymouth was. There are many people who have questioned the influence of the compact on the US Constitution, and they couldn't be more mistaken. It's not word for word. The words of the Mayflower Compact don't appear in our, nation, our nation's document, but it created practices and institutions that shaped New England and New England then shaped the nation. I hope you'll enjoy hearing the words read to you. It's crystalline and compact, and it sets in motion the creation of a government, the creation of rule by law, and the establishment of the safe transfer of power. It's a little treasure within our national legacy. In the name of God, amen. We whose names are underwritten, the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign, Lord King James, by the grace of God of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, King, defender of the faith, etc., having undertaken for the glory of God and advancement of the Christian faith and honor of our king and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia, do by these presents solemnly and mutually, in the presence of God and one of another, covenant and combine ourselves together in a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid, and by virtue hereof to enact, constitute, and frame such just and equal laws, ordinances, acts, constitutions, and offices from time to time, as shall be thought most meet and convenient for the general good of the colony, unto which we promise all due submission and obedience. In witness whereof, we have hereunder subscribed our names at Cape Cod, the 11th of November, in the year of the reign of our sovereign Lord King James of England, France, and Ireland, the 18th, and of Scotland the 54th, Anno Domini, 1620.